Hello and welcome back to the course. Today we've got a super exciting tutorial. We're talking about the three types of cloud storage. And by the end of this tutorial, you will know exactly how file block and object storage work and what the differences are between them. So let's dive straight into it. As we've discussed previously, here are the four elements that make a computer tick. There's a processor, there's random access memory, there's an HDD or SSD, and a network card. And in terms of Amazon Web Services, your EC2 instance represents the processor plus the RAM. And in regards to HDD or SSD, you have several options. There's the Elastic File System, there's the Simple Storage Service or S3, there's the Elastic Block Storage, and there's the Instance Store. Let's look at them individually. So here we've got file storage, block storage, and object storage. And you'll see right away that both Elastic Block Store and Instance Store are part of block storage. Now we're going to start with file storage. The Elastic File System is very similar to file storage that you have on your computer, whether it's Windows, Mac, or Linux. Um, and the difference is that in the cloud, this uh, file system is shared between servers and applications. It is also managed for you. Um, as on your computer, there's hierarchical storage, there's folders and subfolders, and the benefits are that it's simple, convenient, and it has a low cost. In terms of block storage, you have a disk um, or a solid state drive where it's broken down into individual uh, blocks and a file is separated into multiple blocks when it's stored. So each file is separated into blocks and these blocks can be retrieved in parallel, which creates a huge advantage, meaning that rather than reading the file slowly in a consecutive manner, you read it in parallel, you can extract these blocks very fast together, which creates a huge advantage, meaning that files can be read and written really fast. Uh, there's also incremental editing of a file. So imagine you've opened up a file, you've edited a few words or a few pages of that file, and you want to save it rather than resaving the whole file, only the, the blocks that have been changed need to be saved. Another huge advantage. There's also better input output performance. Uh, it can be mounted wherever it may be needed. And uh, you can boot an operating system from it. Now, this last one is not an advantage. It's expand <laughs> the fact that it's expensive, but I wanted to add it here so uh, to make sure we point it out. It's a very expensive type of storage, the most expensive out of the three. Then we've got object storage, which is basically these objects, um, bulky, massive objects sitting inside the storage with um, unique identifiers attached to them. And that's, you can hi that's how you can find them. Uh, it is a highly or infinitely scalable type of storage. You can have flexible access to it from anywhere. It contains rich metadata about each object, and that's why it's better for analytics. And it has a very low cost. And let's quickly talk about use cases. The use cases for file storage are file sharing and collaboration, structured storing of data, archiving files. Use cases for block storage is it's ideal for databases, SQL and NoSQL. It is great for storing data for applications with server-side processing, such as Java, PHP, and .NET. And you can add a file system on top of it. That's right, file systems sit on top of block storage. Um, but of course, once you add a file system, you lose some of the benefits uh, of block storage, but you get some of the benefits of file storage. And uh, in terms of object storage, it's great for storing video, music, images, uh, backups and log files, and it's great for big data. So there we go. That's the three types of storage, how they're different and what they're used for. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I look forward to seeing you throughout the course. And until then, enjoy the cloud.